So we're starting section three of chapter three, which is properties of addition and multiplication. So you can write this down in your notebook. Right now, I just want you to write down the title, which is 3.3, properties of addition and multiplication. So this presentation will take you step by step through what that means with some examples. Don't forget, you can pause the video along the way and then continue when you are ready to move on. So in looking at some of these properties, we're looking for equivalent expressions, so expressions with the same value. So we know that 14 plus 9 plus 16 is the same as 14 plus 16 and 9, and I know that because 14 plus 9 is 23, plus 16 gives me 39. Here I have 14 plus 16 is 30, plus 9 is 39, so I know that the same. The only reason I'd want to change the order is to make the math easier. And when I change the order, that's called the commutative property. So changing the order does not change the sum or the product. I still get the same answer. It's just easier for me to do the math when I can change the order. So here's another way to look at the commutative property. So a plus b is the same as b plus a. So 3 plus 9 is 12. is the same as 9 plus 3. I get the same answer. I'm just changing their order. The way I remember commutative property, I have to commute, I have to move around to get to work. So I'm just moving my numbers around to make the math easier. I can also do that, so I do that with addition. I can also do that with multiplication. I can change their order just to make the math easier because I know that 3 times 9 is the same as 9 times 3, and I know 27 does equal 27. We have another property that we can use, and that's the associative property. So associative property looks at changing the groupings of adding or factoring, multiplying, and that does not change the sum or the product. And again, I'm just moving these numbers around to make the math easier for me to do. So for example, 7 plus 4 plus 2. So I'm going to group 7 plus 4 to start with. But for me, adding 7 plus 4 is not as easy as it is if I change the order of my grouping. So keeping my numbers in the same order. But I know if I change my groupings, I know I get 7 plus 6, which is 13. It's just easier for me to do the math when I change my groupings. So we have another way to look at the associative property. So this is the same thing. So here's addition. So notice we have parentheses around the a and b plus the c. And here we keep the same order, a plus b plus c. We've just moved our parentheses to b, c. I can do the same thing with multiplication down here. I have the same order, a, b, and c. I've just changed how I've grouped them. Here the grouping is around BC, but here it's around AB. And again, I'm just going to do that to make the math easier. Okay, so we have an example to support this. So we cannot add 12 plus X. So what we're going to do is change the way we've grouped this. We're going to keep the numbers in the same order. So I have my same order. I'm just going to change the way I group them to make the math easier. Because 7 plus 12, I can actually add numbers together. So I get 19 plus x. And in this exercise, we're going to kind of give our rationale or tell what we're doing. So this was the associative property of addition. So whenever we move things around, we're going to explain what we've done. So this was the associative property of addition. Okay, here I have another example. So again, I can add numbers and letters. So I think first I need to change the order that they're in to put my numbers next to each other. So I'm going to change this to 6.1 plus 8.4 plus x. Okay, so I've changed the order, so I've commuted the numbers around, so that's the commutative property of addition. I'm 
I'm also going to change my grouping. So now I want my grouping to be that my two numbers are together. And my x is kind of out there by my itself. So again, this would be the associative property of addition. Just again, to make the math easier. Okay. And now if I add 6.1 plus 8.4, I get 14.5 plus x. So in this way, I can actually put my numbers together and have my variable out at the end. Okay, this is still all part of example one, but this is C. So I have five times 11y. So again, I can't really put my letters and my numbers together. So I'm going to change the way I have my associations. I'm going to change those parentheses. So this is, whoopsie, sorry, 5 times 11. And I'm going to put my parentheses around that and keep the y. So I've kept my order the same. I just have changed which ones I have associated. So this is the associative property. But this is of multiplication because I'm multiplying my numbers and I'm not adding them. But I'll get the same answer. This is just making it easier for me mathematically. Okay, so you're going to try some of these on your own using the same process that I just did. So you're either going to rearrange them, change their association, and then you're going to explain each step by using community property of addition, community property of multiplication, associative property of addition or associative property of multiplication. So again, you can rewind to go back to see those properties. You can look in your notes. So you should see your text box on the left hand side. So you're going to um, enter in your information. So you're going to explain the steps that you've used to get to your answer for each of these questions. So we have A, we have B, so again you should see a text box on the right hand side and you're really just going to explain the steps that you used and show me how you have rearranged your equation or how you've changed the groupings. And we also have C, so again enter that in into your text box. So we're going to look at another property. So this is the addition property of zero. So we know the sum, so when I'm adding, of any number in zero is always that number. So zero plus a is a. So I could say zero plus six equals six. That's the, just the addition property of zero. Anytime you add a number to zero, your answer is always going to be that number. Now the multiplication property is a little bit different. So the multiplication property of zero, the product of any number and zero is always zero. So two times zero is zero. Two hundred times zero is always still zero. But the multiplication property of one, the product of any number and one is always that number. So a times one is always a. Um, two times one is always two. And 200 times 1 is always 200. So now we're going to use all of our properties to try to simplify our expressions. So I couldn't find the little dots, so I'm using asterisks or these stars right here for my multiplication symbol to begin. So 9 times 0 times p. So I'm going to associate my 9 and my 0, so that's the associative property of multiplication, because I am using multiplication here. And I'm doing that to show that 9 times any number times 0 is always 0. So I'd have 0 times p, 0 times p is 0. And that is the multiplication property of zero. So we're still writing down 
kind of our um, explaining each step as we go. Okay, so here I have another example. I have 4.5 times, sorry, 4.5 times r times 1. So I'm going to use my associative property to put the r and the 1 together because any number times 1 is that number. So that was my associative property of multiplication. Okay, and anything times 1 is 1, so this gives us 4.5 times r, which is 4.5 r. So this is the multiplication property of 1. Anything times 1 is that same thing. So multiplication property of 1. Okay, we're going to do some more examples. Okay, everyone's favorite, word problems. So you hand out 425 programs on the first night of your school's variety show. So I'm just going to kind of write things down as we go. So I know I have 425 programs on the first night on your school's variety show. P programs on the second night, so plus P on the second night and 520 programs on the third night. It says write an expression for the total number of programs you handed out, then simplify your expression. So I wrote this down, so that's the way it is, but I want to simplify this, so I think I need to put my numbers together. So I'm going to rearrange the order. So I'm going to have 425 plus 520 plus P. And when I rearrange the order, that's my commutative property of addition because I'm commuting my numbers around. And then I'm going to change, or I'm going to add some associations. So I'm going to put these two together, my 425 and my 520. So that's my associative property of addition. so that I can put my numbers together and I will get uh, 945 plus P. Okay, now you're going to do some of these. So again, you're going to explain each step as you go. You should see the text box on the right to put down your answer and to explain each step as you go. So there's going to be a couple of these. Again, don't forget my asterisks are my multiplication sign. So this is L times N times 24. Okay, here's another one. And this is your last one. This is a word problem, so do like we just did before. I always try to underline the important things and try to figure out what I'm doing. So this should be very similar to the problem that we just did.